went in and dumped them on everybody. I have talked to the parents, you know, what sort of school do you want? What kind of education? What is education? Is education just learning a few things out of a book, sitting and dumping them out in an exam as if you were a computer, and contributing nothing to the society which has produced you? What kind of children do you want? What kind of people do you want your children to be? I grew up in Ireland during my very early years. The war in Europe was raging, from 39 to 45. I saw Jewish children being smuggled out to Ireland. I saw the condition they were in. And Ireland was not a, a, an affluent country. It was a very poor country. It was during the winters there in the 1940s where there was snow on the ground and it was very bitterly cold. I sat with children who were without shoes beside me in the desk. I sat with children whose heads were crawling with lice and I went home and told my mother no one would sit beside them and she said you will sit beside them and I will clean your hair when you come home. So when I see poor men here carrying heavy loads, I see my own people also. Looking after people who are poor, caring challenging, uh, helping people to find solutions to their own problems, not just simply handouts. We never had handouts to give, but we had a hand to reach out and help to another person, a heart to care for them. I think that's where all this came into my life. When I small, that, that time I came in. Actually, Maya and Chaya, they were found on the station. They were very, very tiny. And they were brought by an older brother of one of the children already here. This boy said that their surname was Shaw, but that was all we knew about them. When my mother uh, we leave us that time. That time, my I and my sister, I and my sister cry. That Didi's brother has long brother. See, I think my sister and I came in. I like this school. And I have many friends. My name is Shivatra Mondo. I, I came from Maulali, from the street, and I'm 13 years old. When I was small, uh, my father used to drink and beat my mother, and we, we are four sisters. Uh, and my sister used to take us and go to the street and bake, and sister sees us every day. One day she brought us here to school. 
I was going home at 12 o'clock on the night and they were all crying on the side of the road and it was a very wet night. I got very angry because this had been going on for some time. So I brought them inside and I put them on my veranda here. I said, now you sleep here for the night. Don't go back to him. What? We put one plastic over here and we are here we used to live. children took permission from me, they said we're going to confront him. So the biggest girl, Mongolo, and Kali and Ashish went out for the weekend and confronted him with the fact that he was drinking too much and he was beating up their mother. No other girl that I know of in India in all my years here has ever had the courage to stand in front of her father and face him with something that he had done wrong. I think it's a fantastic um, witness to what education can do for kids. When I was small, I used to play. And I, I, from the small, I want to be a teacher. So I used to <laughs> say, here I'm telling one story and they're listening. Kali suffered from having a family that did not support her. As she grew older, she began to fall further and further behind because the father was drinking, even though we got the father off the drink many, many times. The mother idea, you see, is get them married off as quickly as possible, and then they have no responsibility. We keep on inviting Kali back. For any child like this, the place is always open. most important thing for these children is the acceptance that they get, that they're loved as they are. And then they have the strength to change themselves. But we don't put um, sort of that you must reach this much by this time. Those kind of things we don't do for them. Just let them grow and be happy in a free, as free a system as is possible. And then we get the children who really, really need to be in and on their free will to remain with us because our gates are open. It's not a prison. So we're not catching children on the street who need to be brought in and forcing them to come in and stay. They have to make that decision themselves. It's not just a question of feeding them and clothing them. It's also the question of forming their personalities, helping them to develop as people to their best potential, seeing that their, that their best potential is not in any way um, inhibited by the sufferings that some of them have undergone. I think that is extremely satisfying. Now we found, uh, some time ago, a little three-year-old child, little girl, was raped. And I began to realise then the risk, especially that girl children undergo while they're out on the streets. So I said, why can they not come and live in the school and be safe? And that began the Loretto Rainbow Homes programme, whereby we take in girls who are at risk on the streets and they live in the school as in their home because all our big schools lie empty from 2 every afternoon to 8 the next morning. So children can easily come in and occupy the space, use the toilets, the showers, whatever is available to them, and then uh, have it ready for the day scholars the next morning. We keep children who would perhaps have no parents, many of them have no parents at all, and uh, some of them have parents, but the parents are so dysfunctional that it's not possible for them to stay with them. They help to cook their own food. We do have a cook who also cooks, as I say, for seven hundred in the middle of the day. They make their own breakfast. They make their chapatis every night. We are making chapati. For everyone. 
we will do tomorrow uh, we will do now and tomorrow we will give everyone and they will eat and we will finish they work very well in teams after their dinner some clean up uh, the kitchen and some wipe down the tables and some wash burtons uh, some clean out toilets and so on they do their homework also at uh, their dinner they are allowed to look at television some cartoons and really at uh, the night shelter the whole setup for these street children is meant to be as close to a home atmosphere as possible And we don't uh, enter into this boarding school syndrome of having beds and dormitories and things like that. So in India, most people do sleep on the ground. Most people sleep on a, on a bamboo mat. So the children have these mats. They sleep on them during the night. And then in the morning, they roll them up, put them away neatly. And the same area which they use during the night for sleeping is used during the day for teaching. The education for the other children is sponsored by people coming from all over the world from India itself and from outside. Uh, so I don't ask any parents to pay extra. But I do leave it open to them that if they would like to take on another child, if they can afford it, it would be good for them. And many of them do that. <laughs> In class five or so, I do a reflection, who pays your fees? Do you, do you earn the money to pay your fees? No. So that means your parents pay your fees or someone else pays your fees, but nobody in this class pays fees. So you are all equal. You are all living on the graciousness of other people. Have you any questions, anything you haven't understood? Anything that requires an explanation? Yes? What about the lungs? Yes, we, didn't, uh, we didn't do respiratory system in class 9. See what happens when you breathe. Have you drawn breath into your lungs or it has come in on its own? Drawn. No. What you have done by sitting up straight, you have created a vacuum. Here in the middle of you, you have a, um, a diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Now, that diaphragm becomes flat. Mm -hmm. So your diaphragm muscle flatness. That's the first thing. Your ribs, sit up straight, take a breath. Can you feel your ribs moving up? I only need the body. <laughs> the first thing I have to tackle is competition. Many of the schools are rife with competition. Competition meaning that the child who gets the highest marks gets the best prize every year. Now this makes the parents also rabid because they want their children to get the first prize. So the first thing I have to tackle is this whole concept of children being pitted against each other in competition. Now when you get rid of that and you bring in the idea of the community values, not competitive values, you've already practically won your battle. Because if you have these competitive values where people are competing for half a mark, they're not going to stay back in the afternoon to help a poor child. They want to get their marks, they want tuitions. But when you remove that, then you compete with yourself. You Strive for excellence at the level of your own potential, not someone else's. And this relieves the children of a lot of pressure because they don't have to measure up to come first. They can all get the prize if they work hard enough. Mm -hmm. You'll find by next year, a year after, the children will be willing to work for other children because that pressure is off them. Um, I have this uh, five-year-old child staying at my place. He's actually uh, my maid's uh, grandson. Uh, she has been working in our house for the past 17 years and uh, my, me and my sister, we have actually uh, put the child into a school and I myself uh, teach him 
every day for around uh, one hour or so. Come on. She's not going to be doctors. I'm not going to be surgeons, but you're going to do what you can for you can't feed. যখন বাড়িতে ছিলাম আমি অন্য জায়গায় কাজ করতাম ওরা যখন আমায় পয়সা দিত তখন আমার হাতে দিত না বলকে আমার মায়ের হাতে দিত বহুত চিল্লাতা তা মারতা তা এক এক বি কাম ভুল যাতা তো বহুত মারতা তা उसका लड़की हमको जो छुपा के लेके भाग आए वो बोल पांच में उठती है उठके हमको सहारा में बुलाती है मेरा कपड़ा वहीं रहता है हम उस कपड़ा का संग ले कर हमको भाग के लाई थी वो ये स्कूल का जब वो ये स्कूल में पढ़ता था वो यहाँ का हेड था जैसा वो सब गरीब गरीब लड़की लोग को भर्ती कराता था वही था उसको शिष्य बोला था जो जितना भी गरीब लड़की को मिलेगा यहाँ पर ही लाना वही ला के ले कर भाग आया Children who come from families who can't afford to feed them and who can't afford to clothe them, and they hand them on to another family that can afford to keep them and clothe them, but who in return exact maybe 10 to 12 hours of slave labor from them, and they pay the parents maybe 200 rupees a month for them. And these are the most pitiable little children because they're locked into these houses and nobody can get at them. Any adult going will be told, oh, she's only up on a visit from the village, and the child is too frightened to say otherwise. Our children, regular children who live in those same areas, they know who these children are and they know that these children are uh, kept in the houses. So they go along and as well as that their parents are on the same social standing as the employer. So it's difficult for the employer to reject our children. They go along and they say, you know, we have a, a little girl, little boy living here, please allow them out once a week. Uh, we were, are making a club for children of the neighbourhood. And so they get them out, they listen to their story, they find out what is their problem, if they are, have a toothache, if they need to see a doctor, are they lonely, how are they treated in the house, and so on. And for an hour every week they get them out, and then they go back and they harass the employers, please let them out every day. Wherever I go, I see some child, I start talking with her, first ask her name, then from where she came, and then ask her address. Then I say, you want to be my friend and whatever, involved with her. I try to make friends with her. And after that, I visit one and see what she's doing. वो छोटो थे चिलो ना वहाँ का जेदा वो बड़ो वो लो बीए दिए 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 है 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 वो लो जेदा बीए दिला है है दिए कौतूहल बॉयस ए वो बस दस बच्चे हैं लड़कों से लड़कों लेवल नहीं है तो कौन ऐसे चिलो तो कौन तो कौन वो बोल रहा है छह साल बच्चे सिक्स इयर्स वो इंशिका हम बड़ दिल्ली तो नहीं गए थे लोगे। दिल्ली तो चले। वो खाना काज करते हो। काज करते हो पर खूब मार धूप करते हो दिल्ली पे। हमारे वो जेठामुसे एक ने काज करे मिस्ती दुकान।